they don't know how long, they don't know where, what type of uh, advice would you give? Now, the length of time is not the issue, but the quality of your prayer. Your heart connecting with God on the throne. No distraction, you're focused on Him and Him alone. And then you depend on the Holy Spirit. Mm. Now, you may start out with five minutes, and then as you practice, it will grow to 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then before you know it, as you mature in the art, it becomes something you can spend considerable amount of time with God. So nobody needs to feel guilty that, oh, I can't spend one hour, I can't spend three hours, I can't spend 30 minutes. Now, start small, but let it grow. It continues intimate fellowship with God. And discover that the Holy Spirit will lead us step by step. Now, I remember uh, a, a, a chapter of the scripture in Ezekiel chapter 47, when uh, an angel of the Lord came to give a revelation to the man Ezekiel. And he measured, he saw a river, and then he measured a thousand cubits, mm -hmm. and he laid them on, and it was the ankle level. Mm -hmm. okay. And then measured another thousand, mm -hmm. it was the knee. Yeah. And then measured another thousand, it was the loin. And then measured another thousand, it was big river to swim in. It, as we continue with God consistently, a little at a time, mm -hmm. he leads us from glory to glory, mm -hmm. from glory to glory from glory to glory. And you discover that in a short while, you are not where you used to be anymore. You've moved on in God. Now, none of us has arrived. We all are growing. We are not where God wants us to be yet. But as we fellowship with God day by day, it takes us one step after another, one step after another. After all, Jesus our Lord, uh, uh, whose example we follow? He said in Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, He said, Follow me, and I will make you. Now, we conclude with fishers of men. Now, I, I, I normally love to leave it open ended. Yeah. As you follow the Lord, you follow the Master, He will make you whatever He wants you to do. Yeah. <laughs> one step after the other, one step after the other. Every step of obedience is a step of promotion. Each time you obey the Lord and you follow Him, you are never the same. He moves you on from glory to glory. So we don't need to despair. Oh, I can't spend one hour. I can't spend 30 minutes. Start where you are. Your heart connecting with God. Trust in the Holy Spirit. And then be consistent about it. A daily walk with God. And then we discover that step by step by step is taking us from glory to glory. Thank you, sir. You quote in the book Isaiah 40, 31, which is well known. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. Yes, sir. How has that been effective in your life? Um, a, a dear friend of mine said in a joke, he said, Francis, you know, we are holy people. So we are full of holes. <laughs> so when God pours grace upon us, as we continue to serve the Lord and serve our community, it leaks out yeah. because we are holy. You know? <laughs> but from time to time, we go back to His presence and refill. It's like breathing in and breathing out. When we go to the presence of the Lord to fellowship with Him, we breathe in. The glory, His grace, His blessing. When we leave His presence, we go out to serve the world, to serve our community. And whatever we are breathed in, in the presence of God, we breathe out upon the people. And then we go back again to refuel. It's just like you drive your car around. Uh, if, you, if you feel the tank now, um, it doesn't matter how new and how good your car is, you need to feel the tank again and fill the tank again, and fill the tank again. Likewise, when we go to the presence of God to fellowship with Him, we, we fuel up, we load the tank, and then we go out there to bless the world, to be His ambassador, His representative. And because we are holy, 
we leak. <laughs> and then we go back again and we renew our strength. On a personal note, I do a lot of traveling, a lot of traveling. Preaching, traveling, preaching, traveling, preaching, traveling. And I discovered that if I don't go back to his presence, I'll burn out. So I make it a point of duty to set a time aside. Apart from praying in the church, praying with my team, praying with a group of brethren, I just go right in his presence and say, Lord, I'm here again. Feel me all over again. And he renews my strength day by day. That's my testimony. And you're saying that really this being alone needs to be a specific prayer and not sort of bookshot all over the heavens. That's correct, sir. Um, there are examples in the scripture. See, when God, when we come to the presence of God, yes, we come to fellowship. But we come to receive. Our Lord Jesus Christ said in Mark chapter 11, verse 24, He said, What thing soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, you shall have it. So He wants us to come to His presence with our specific names when we talk to Him about it. Like Hannah, when Hannah came to the house of God, she had a need in her life. She was barren. Mm. And then she stood before the Lord. And she was very specific. She asked for a child. She didn't just ask for a child. She asked for a male child. I mean, she was very specific. And she gave her the commitment and said, if you can give me a male child, I'm going to give him back to you. It was a good deal. I've been looking for somebody. I want to send a great prophet to the world, and I'm looking for a child. And you are, OK, you qualify. When she returned, back again according to that same first summary chapter 1 verse 23 she returned with Samuel and she said to Eli he said I was a woman that stood here before you for this child I prayed and the Lord granted my petition our God answers prayer when we are very very specific in presenting our name he answers us as specifically as we pray Samuel and her mother are a good example of this. When we go before the Lord, we go with our specific need and we speak to him about it. And he cares. So you use Hannah in the book yes, sir. as David and one of the other the specific examples. You just covered that she had a great burden, which drove her to prayer. Yes. You said she had a great burden. You then said she dedicated herself to God while praying. How, how do you dedicate yourself to God while you're praying? What would that mean? Um, it involves our will. Uh, there's a difference between obedience and submission. <laughs> I, obedience can be enforced. The submission is voluntary. Yeah. Now, I read a story of a woman traveling by train with a little boy, John. And the boy was running all over the place in the train. And when the train was about to make a bend, the mother said, John, please sit down. Come on, John, sit down. We're about to make a bend. Sit down. And John said, no, mom, I'm not sitting down. And then I was still running around. Mama ran after him and grabbed him. I said, come on, John, honey, sit down, sit down. Made him to sit down. And the boy, ashen-faced, sat down. I said, mom, look at me. I'm sitting down. He said, beautiful. Oh, I want for but I'm standing up inside. <laughs> now, you have used your strength to overcome me and to make me to sit down. But I didn't choose to sit down. Yeah, very good. Now, dedication means as an act of our will, we submit and surrender to God. Lord, have your way in my life. I'm not doing this because the pastor said I should do it. I'm not doing it because somebody is coercing me to do it. As a matter of my will, I submit to you. That's what Jesus Christ did in the garden before he went to the cross. What he was going to go through was not pleasant. No. But it was the will of the Father. And he for long to really submit to you. 
So when we submit to God, when we pray that His will may be done in our lives and His kingdom come in our lives, God moves to do extraordinary things in our lives. It's a very critical issue in getting our prayers answered. A lot of believers have been praying and they have no answer to their prayers simply because they have no really, truly, totally, willingly submitted themselves to God. And God wants us to do in, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, all the apostles say, I beseech thee therefore by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. Paul was literally pleaded yeah, because, it, because it involves our will. Yeah. If you don't want to do it, God won't force you. Paul was saying, please do it. It's the best thing for you. Trust God enough to submit the totality of your life to you. And you say with Hannah, you say, uh, and, and what we get in England is this, uh, well he knows what I want, I don't have to keep praying. And they say, I've been out once to be prayed for, to be healed, I don't have to go out again. But you say through Hannah, she was persistent. She was. She didn't give up. She didn't. And do you find that we, we give up too soon? Many times we give up too soon. Um, Jesus Christ told a part of a woman in Luke chapter 18, an, an unjust judge who kept troubling the judge, avenge me, my adversary, avenge me, my adversary. And she wasn't going to go away, avenge me, my adversary. And then this judge said, even though I don't believe God, I don't have a guy for me, but this woman is troubling me. I'm going to avenge her, my adversary. <laughs> And Jesus Christ now used that as an example to teach us about persistence. And he said, but when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth? It takes faith to be persistent. It takes faith to know that even though there's a delay, delay is not denier. The vision is for an appointed time. I'm going to wait on God until he does. That's what Hannah did. And God did. And then and you, anybody can do that, and God will come through for and, and then you say she prayed with her heart. What's the difference between heart and head? Uh, sometimes, our mouth, has, our mouth is speaking, but our heart is not connected. So we're saying what we think he wants to hear, but not what our heart tells us. So we're, we're giving him head lip service. Lip service. Head stuff. Mental stuff. Whereas God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God wants to connect with our spirit, with our hearts. So we want our hearts to be focused on him. We eliminate all distraction. When we want to have a time along with God, that's the time to switch off the telephone. That's the time to put the diary aside. No appointment. I tell my people back in Nigeria, I can keep my appointment with men because I keep my appointment with God. Oh, but can, you, can you say that again? I can keep my appointment with men because I do keep I my appointment. keep my appointment with men because I, keep because my I always keep my appointment with God. Or otherwise you're putting man above God. If, if I don't spend time in the presence of God before people, I'll be confused. I don't know what to do. That's because you won't give me a word to say. I want to go back again. Because that's profound, because we wouldn't think sometimes of breaking an appointment. Because we promised to see somebody at 2 o'clock in our office. But your saying is, how many times have we broken an appointment with God? The appointment with God takes precedence over the appointment with men. We, 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 we have peace in our lives when we spend quality time with God. In fact, He delivers us from some people that simply come to waste our time. <laughs> People that add no value to your life whatsoever. Did they have those in Nigeria? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> they have them in Zimbabwe, I know that. But they, <laughs> <laughs> they have them in Nigeria. <laughs> oh, they, they just take and take attention and take and, and take, you know. Whereas if you, if you spend time, quality time with God, just one word is enough. Yeah. Look at Jesus Christ. When he made that woman, the Samaritan woman, he was spot on. 
is a good call your husband. Mm -hmm. I'm not married. Oh, you're right. You've been with five men, and the one you are with is not your husband. Oh, it's a prophet. And as I saw this, I've seen this in Bishop Carr, at least on two occasions. Now, tonight, I, I brought one of my sons with me, and I introduced him to Bishop. And I said, please, never that let Bishop bless you. By the way, we respect him very much in Nigeria. We call him Papa Abraham. <laughs> <laughs> because he's not, they, they call me, they call me daddy. But he's older than me. Yes, I am. So, <laughs> so when it comes into the congregation, everybody bows. You know? <laughs> and he asked me, he said, is it because I'm a bishop? I said, no. Is it because I'm white? I said, no. <laughs> What's it about? Because you are an old man. <laughs> Thank you. You can sit down. <laughs> 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 we respect age. Yes. Yes. So I'm going to live there next week. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're very similar.